Hello everyone, this is Dr. Suresh here and in this video we will be explaining about the digestion, absorption and transport aspects of carbohydrates. So before going in detail about the carbohydrates metabolism, okay, so we will just get back to the few basic points of carbohydrates as we have discussed in the chemistry part of carbohydrates. So the composition of carbohydrates, there are various forms of carbohydrates. Let's begin with the monosaccharides and secondly with the disaccharides, oligosaccharides and then polysaccharides. So whatever the food that we are consuming in, in relation to the carbohydrates, all these are all present in the diet. Right. So firstly, polysaccharides. So the form of like complex carbohydrates, they include starch, glycogen and cellulose and coming to the disaccharides, sucrose, maltose, lactose and monosaccharides, they are present, I mean like uh, glucose and fructose. So polysaccharides are usually present in staple foods like chapati, rice, right and then disaccharides uh, which are extensively present in um, sugarcane juice and then milk and monosaccharides their simplest form of carbohydrates and in case of any inability in case of digestion and absorption they will be injected in IV form. To begin the digestion of carbohydrates it will start in the mouth and secondly it goes to the stomach where the digestion part of carbohydrate will be halted for some time. So first we'll talk about the digestion at mouth. So how the digestion of carbohydrates will be taking place in the mouth? So because of the presence of salivary glands, so the saliva that we are uh, getting from salivary gland, it's a composition of so many substances. Out of these substances, amylase is the greater part. Okay, and this amylase is going to be work on the starch because the complex carbohydrate that majorly present in our diet that is starch, and it is a composition of amylose and amylopectin and amylose and amylopectin the branches we already know amylose is made up of alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage and alpha I mean amylopectin is made up of alpha 1 4 as well as alpha 1 6 glycosidic linkage but the thing with the alpha amylase here it will be working on alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage hardly will be keeping the food in the mouth for second I mean maybe 10 to 20 seconds after that will be swallowing and the food will be reaching to the stomach right and this time may not be sufficient for alpha amylase to completely work on the whatever the starch present in the diet. So this alpha amylase acts briefly on dietary starch and glycogen. So starch is a vegetable source and glycogen is an animal source. So whatever the linkages present in starch and glycogen amylase work on alpha 1 4 glycosidic bonds and alpha amylase it hydrolyzes starch into alpha limit dextrins that means broken part of starch known as alpha limit dextrins. So here in the this slide as I am showing in the picture diagrammatic representation how the alpha amylase is working. So here the purple colors you can make out here the purple color one and the blue color one. So wherever the blue color dot is there that indicates branching. So that means that branching is for alpha 1 6 glycosidic linkage. And alpha 1 4 as I, we already mentioned alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage acted by the enzyme alpha amylase. Okay. So when alpha amylase is working on this alpha 1 4 glycosidic bonds. Okay. They will we'll be getting shorter uh, uh, removed parts of starch. They are in the form of maltotriose. If the three, three forms of three glucose units are attached that is known as maltotriose. If two glucose units are attached they are known as maltose. And in the blue dots you can see here that is isomaltose which is having the linkage two forms of glucose which are in alpha 1 6 glycosidic linkage. So now when the food the partially digested food reaches to the stomach you know the conditions over there. So the conditions in the stomach are acidic okay because of the production of HCl in the stomach the conditions are acidic in acidic environment alpha amylase stops working. So that means there is no digestion of carbohydrates in the stomach. So from stomach the food will be reaching to the upper part of intestine okay where it will be mixing up with the contents releasing from the pancreas and the liver okay. So for especially from pancreas the food which is coming from the stomach to the upper part of intestine is which is acidic so to neutralize this acidic pH uh, pancreas will be releasing watery secretion rich of bicarbonates and it neutralizes the acidity of the chyme. So, so that the enzymes whatever releasing from the pancreas can work efficiently on the partially digested 
carbohydrates okay the enzyme that specifically releasing from the pancreas that is also alpha amylase but you see the difference alpha amylase is present in the saliva at the same time alpha amylase present in the pancreas but the thing is location so the amylase which is releasing from the saliva that is known as salivary amylase and the amylase which is releasing from the pancreas that is known as pancreatic amylase right so this pancreatic amylase okay with the uh, comfortable sophisticated uh, environment it will work completely on the starch okay and it completely breaks down the starch into smaller segments right so alpha amylase is broken down the smaller i mean starch into alpha limit dextrins and into maltose okay and now there are some other enzymes when the food is reaching to the uh, reaching down to the lower parts of the intestine like uh, ileum jejunum duodenum okay there the breast borders of intestinal uh, intestinal villi they will be having the enzymes which especially uh, digesting the disaccharides okay because why why this digestion because complex forms of carbohydrates they cannot be absorbed by the intestinal cells so only simple form of carbohydrates can be absorbed from the intestine so that part taken over by the enzymes that are located in the brush borders of intestinal villi so what are the enzymes they present that is like sucrase maltase lactase and isomaltase with the name itself we can make out so all these enzymes work on the corresponding substance like sucrase you take sucrase will be working on sucrose and we know the composition of sucrose it is made up of one molecule of glucose and one molecule of fructose so it separates the sucrose into glucose and fructose so then these simple forms of carbohydrates can be easily absorbed into the intestinal cells from there to the proto circulation to the liver so maltase is will be working on maltose okay and converting into two glucose units and lactase is working on lactose and converting into one molecule of uh, glucose and one molecule of galactose and isomaltase will be working on isomaltose so we have seen the whatever the uh, alpha amylases okay salivary amylase also pancreatic amylase so they cannot break the linkage of alpha 146 glycosidic linkage why because alpha amylase will work only on alpha 14 glycosidic linkage so and this isomaltase will be working on alpha 16 glycosidic linkage and breaks it to two glucose individual glucose units so now as we said like uh, pancreatic alpha amylase degrades dextrins further into mixture of maltose isomaltose and alpha limit dextrins the alpha limit dextrins are smaller oligosaccharides which are containing 3 to 5 glucose units which are again further reduced to disaccharides and then to monosaccharides so in this diagrammatic representation you can make out here what are the enzymes that located in intestinal uh, breast borders of intestinal villi so maltose converting to glucose to glucose isomaltase to glucose to glucose sucrose to glucose plus fructose lactose to glucose plus galactose alpha limit dextrin glucose to maltose so finally the end products of carbohydrate digestion are simplest carbohydrates they are glucose fructose galactose which can easily be absorbed in the intestinal cells so in this diagrammatic representation you can make out so dietary carbohydrates so they are a mix up of polysaccharide disaccharide and monosaccharides so there is no digestion of uh, disaccharides and monosaccharides in the mouth and only the digestion of polysaccharides will start in the mouth because of the presence of the enzyme alpha amylase secreted by the salivary glands okay from there the polysaccharides will be converted to dextrins in stomach there is no digestion and from uh, stomach they will be uh, passing down to small intestine they are again acted by the enzyme pancreatic amylase and this pancreatic amylase uh, convert dextrins into smaller forms like disaccharides and trisaccharides like maltotriose maltose sucrose and lactose as we mentioned as the food is reaching to the lower parts of the intestine the intestinal villi brush borders having the enzymes for disaccharides further they will be converting disaccharides into monosaccharides and these monosaccharides will be completely absorbed into the intestinal cells from there to proto circulation and to the liver so this is our overview of digestion of carbohydrates so now coming to the absorption aspect of carbohydrates so there are two mechanisms which are responsible for absorption of uh, monosaccharides okay because only monosaccharides can be absorbed in the intestine so the same way here absorption of carbohydrates also will be studying so two mechanisms one is active transport mechanism other one is facilitative transport mechanism active transport we have already studied at our school like what is the concentration gradient like uh, active transport and facilitative transport so facilitative transport is based on concentration gradient that means 
in outside the intestinal cell and inside the intestinal cell so when the food undergoing digestion at the time of absorption the food, the things the concentration of food particles are simple form of carbohydrates concentration will be less outside the intestinal cell and compared to the inside so based on this concentration gradient, gradient uh, particles will be moving from high concentration gradient to low concentration gradient right so the same is happening here so as intestinal uh, cells outside the intestinal cells high glucose concentration will be there compared to the inside of the intestinal cells so that's why from high higher concentration to lower concentration glucose will be moving but the second one that is active transport okay it is against the concentration irrespective it doesn't matter whether the concentration is high or low inside and out but still the glucose will be transported inside the cells okay based on by by spending the energy okay based on uh, the activation of atp at cellular uh, level now first we'll talk about active transport uh, active transport uh, here the transport of glucose and galactose occurs by active transport specially okay in different cells not only intestine there are so many uh, glucose transporters available like glut1 to glut7 okay so all these transporters present in different parts of the body like different tissues are using different glucose transporters so they are famous as glut glut1 glut2 glut3 glut4 glut5 glut6 and then sodium potassium uh, atp is dependent uh, glucose transport okay so here active transport requires energy in the form of atp and a specific transport protein okay and the second thing is a third thing is sodium ions okay so it is like a symport when glucose molecule has to enter inside the cell at the same time sodium ions also has to move inside okay without that i mean without the uh, use of sodium glucose will not enter so that means the transporter which is located on the cell membrane okay will allow both the molecules at a time that means one side sodium has to go and other side glucose in absence of any one no nothing no one will enter okay that is called symport mechanism so you see here in the picture here active and facilitated transport both the things i am showing in the picture okay in active transport you see here glucose and sodium okay because of the transport protein here glucose and galactose will be entering inside along with the uh, uh, sodium okay and whatever the sodium uh, entered again it has to get out with the entry of potassium inside here you require energy okay that is sodium potassium atps pump okay so that's why we said active transport is a energy based okay and when you see the facilitated transport you see here the glucose and fru fructose and mannose concentration will be less inside compared to the outside so that's why these things will be move into the into the cell as per the concentration gradient okay you see here glut2 transporters i i can uh, I, i have mentioned already here glut2 transporter here and glut5 transporters which facilitates the movement of speci uh, specifically monosaccharides across the membrane cell membrane now uh, fructose and mannose are transported by sodium dependent uh, sodium independent facilitative diffusion process requiring specific glucose transport that is glut5 especially you see glut5 useful for transportation of fructose and mannose not the glucose remember whether glut1 glut2 glut3 glut4 they are for mainly transportation of glucose in various parts like uh, tissues brain tissues require one sort of glucose transporter and pancreas and liver cells will require one type of intestinal cells require one type kidney for reabsorption further they require another type of glucose transporter so like this so movement of sugar in facilitative diffusion is strictly from higher concentration to lower one until it reaches to a equilibrium so here the sodium independent transporter glut2 facilitates transport of sugar out of the mucosal cells okay so we require one transporter to enter into the intestinal mucosal cells and another transporter to get out of the intestinal mucosal cells so one end one one type of transport is there and other end other type of transporter is there so through porter circulation they will be uh, uh, dumping into the liver so now coming to the uh, disorders related to um, absorption of carbohydrate metabolism so main and the major one to discuss here is lactose intolerance so lactose intolerance is uh, genetically related as well okay so what do you mean that lactose intolerance lactose intolerance is nothing but intolerance to lactose because for neonates and the babies the major food uh, source is milk and milk contains carbohydrate that is disaccharide lactose so the major amount of energy they are getting from the lactose if they uh, what enzyme we have already discussed for digestion of enzyme we require one and that is lactase if there is no lactase then how lactose will be digested okay so 
lactose intolerance is nothing but intolerance to lactose or the person or the baby couldn't able to convert lactose into glucose or galactose okay and here the deficient enzyme is lactase and lacto lactose undergoes so undigested lactose okay because of absence of this lactase lactose cannot be digested and this undigested lactose will be moving to the uh, lower parts of the gut okay where bacterial not natural flora of bacteria will be there so these bacteria will ferment the lactose uh, and producing what they will, it will work on the lactose and converting the lactose into uh, hydrogen gas and then carbon dioxide gases okay and also it will produce acetic acid and propionic acid and butyric acid which are all undesired to be produced and they causes diarrhea flatulence okay all these side effects so what are the clinical futures what are the clinical futures of lactose intolerance so mainly if the baby is couldn't if the baby is not uh, able to digesting the uh, lactose okay so what are the clinical symptoms we are facing so one is abdominal cramps because we have already uh, discussed so what are the products will be produced in case of undigested lactose okay it is producing various gases hydrogen carbon uh, carbon dioxide gases okay and then uh, diarrhea so because of that gas production abdominal cramps will be there flatulence results from the accumulation of gases and osmolytically active products this lactose will be converted into osmolytically active product and it grabs a lot of water okay uh, from intestinal cells and uh, into the lumen resulting diarrhea and dehydration so treatment for this disorder is simply to remove lactose from the diet okay that is only the thing in in place of uh, lactose you can provide directly galactose or glucose okay so it is not only restricted uh, to the babies in adults also sometimes it can seen and it is a genetically related disorder okay lactose intolerance is a genetically related disorder okay so that's all about uh, carbohydrate digestion and absorption and their disorders thanks for watching thank you